let us do a quick review of all the concepts we have learned till now. Our very first example we learned how to do a print statement. To print something to the console you use system.out.println and then you can put anything within double quotes and it will print it to the console. Same way we learned how to declare numbers like integer x equal to 10 and then we learned how to add numbers or like multiply or the mod. Mod is basically how many times does 3 go in 10. 3 goes in 10 3 times so the remainder is 1 and the x mod y it will print out the result as 1. Next we learned about the if statement. We had two numbers x and y. If x is less than y, print out like x is less than y. Else if x is equal to equal to y, print out x is equal to y. Else system.out.println x is greater than y. Then we learned the for statement. A for statement has three parts. First is the initial value. Then the condition. The condition must always be true for this for to be executed. And then the incrementer or decrementer. So in this case, I am going to print the initial value of i equal to 10. So it will it will check is 10 greater than 0. Yes, it is greater than 0. Then it will go and print out i equal to 10. Then the next time it comes over, it will reduce the value of 10 by 1. i minus minus will decrease the value of 10 by 1. So this one will print from 10 up to 1 but not 0 because it will stop when it comes to 0. Then we saw the concept of while loop. A while loop will first check for the condition and then execute the block of code. So in this case, x equal to 10, as long as 10 is less than 0, it will it will execute this. In this case, it will not 10 is not less than 0, so it will not execute. So you can see here this will not be executed. But if you say as long as 10 is greater than or equal to 0, it will execute and then here you are incrementing the value of x or you can decrement the value of x if you want. So you can see that it has printed minus 10, it is 0 less than 0 and then you are incrementing by 2. Then we saw the concept of do while. Do while will first execute the block of code and then it will check for condition. So in this case, so here in this case I have x equal to 10, it will execute that x equal to 10 and then it will reduce the value and it will keep looping till the value of x is greater than 0. So the advantage of do while is even if the condition is false it will execute this block of code at least once. So that is the difference between while and do while. Next we saw the concept of switch case. We can use like integer double or string from Java 7 we can use string for the switch case. Switch case is like you have some kind of a data like string j equal to 2 and then switch j it will look for a case that matches this particular string. So case 2 it matches this particular word 2 so this particular block of code value is 2 will be printed and it will break out of this particular switch case. If you don't have the break it will fall down to the next case and it will start printing here. If none of the cases match, then the default case will be printed. Then we saw the concept of AND and OR statement. That is, if you have like two conditions and both the conditions have to be true, that means you can use the AND. That is, if x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0, then print both numbers are positive. If either one have to be true, then use the OR statement. That is, x is greater than 0 or y is greater than 0, then print out at least one number is positive. We also saw the concept of arrays. So basically, if you have like some kind of a data, the same data, and you want to store them, you can use an array. So this is an integer array of A, so which will be used to store an array of integers. It will create boxes and it will put them as A of 0 to A of 4. And you can access those data by saying a of 2 and a of 4. If you want to loop through an array, you can use an enhanced for or a for each loop. You can say like the data type, integer, put some temporary variable, colon, the name of the array a, and then you can print out temp. You can also declare arrays and then assign values to those particular array boxes. If you don't assign some value, by default it will take 0. And same way you can loop through this particular array too. 
You can also create string arrays if you want. Here you are creating a string array and of course while looping through a string array the data type of this array is string. You put a temporary variable colon the name of the array and then it will print out temp. And same thing happens for you can declare a string array and you can loop through those string array. Of course if you don't assign any value to a particular box by default for string array it will be null value. You can also create two dimensional arrays. Two dimensional array is a matrix that is it will have four rows and three columns so you have like two dimensional array and you can assign data to time two dimensional arrays like this you can say like row and column and you can assign some data you can use a loop within a loop to assign data or to print a two dimensional array. Then we also saw the concept of strings that is how to manipulate strings, how to concatenate strings, use some of the string methods, get the substring and find what are the characters and we saw the concept of wrapper classes that that is if you have some data, some number that is as a string that comes to you as a string then you can always convert that into a number so that you can manipulate that number.